What do we got? Do you have an update on Zai and how much time he's expected to miss? Yeah, he's going to miss some time. Um, he's got a lower body injury, um, so he'll miss some time. Um, Makai Wingo has got a uh, lower body injury. He's going to miss some time as well, so both those guys will miss some time. It, right now, it's, it's hard to say. Uh, both of them uh, are not practicing. Uh, we'll see what happens next week. Hey, Coach. Up here. To your left. Um, what's the vibe of practice this week? Is it more laid back because it's an you know, open date, or is it the same as it always is during a game week? Yeah, we're very intentional about our work. We, we, as you know, we're you know, certainly a, a football team that needs to improve. Um, you know, we've identified a number of areas that um, – you know, we have to get better at, um, you know, we're, uh, more, we're young in some areas. Uh, we're trying to develop depth. Um, you know, there are some players that, that are going to get an opportunity to uh, compete uh, that have not played a lot of football. So uh, there's a lot of work um, over these uh, next couple of days that uh, our, our team needs these practice days. And uh, we're taking full advantage. Now, we understand that, you know, you, you need some active recovery as well. Um, and, and like everybody else in the country, you know, we'll, we'll get out and, and do some evaluations, um, use some of our evaluation days. But um, clearly, uh, this is not a, um, you know, check the box, you know, run around, um, you know, camp seven on seven. I mean, we, we need to get better. Hey, Coach. Uh, obviously, you're very familiar with a guy like Tommy Reese. What, when, when you were first coaching with him, and he was the even when he was a quarterback, and as the quarterbacks coach, what made you think that he could be a good offensive coordinator? Just a very, uh, I think, insightful, smart, um, intuitive uh, football uh, person. I mean, he knows the game. Um, but look. You know, being a quarterback coach is one thing, and, and certainly he did a great job as a quarterback coach, but then when you're elevated to a coordinator's position, you also have to be able to uh, have great relationships with um, all of your players. You have to organize a staff. Um, and, and so, you know, he brings much more than just being a guy that knows football. Um, He's smart, he's uh, savvy, he just, look, I mean, coordinators have to uh, motivate and, and put together plans based upon the personnel they have. You've seen what he's done with uh, the quarterback, um, and um, he's gotten better and better each week. So, um, you know, I played him as a true freshman, and he was ready to play as a true freshman at Notre Dame. I think that says a lot about, you know, who he is as a person. and. He's, he's always been ahead of the curve when it comes to things like that. Hey, Coach. Um, Denver and Duke, so they both inactive at this point. And people have asked, what does inactive mean? Is that like a healthy scratch? Is that discipline? Is that the university? What, what is inactive? Yeah, I know. I, I, listen, I, I know a lot of people have questions about their status. All, all I can tell you is that they're on scholarship. They're enrolled in school. Uh, but right now, they're, they're not participating. Um, they're still in the program. Uh, they're still in good standing. Um, but, but they're not able to play right now. So uh, let's you know, leave it at that. Let's be patient, and um, we'll see what happens down the road. No. Hey, Coach. Andre Samba, one of his best games of the season on Saturday. What, what does his progression kind of look like since taking over that role early in the year? You know, that's a good question. I would say it's been um, patience, control, um, playing within himself. I thought maybe played a little bit outside of himself a little bit, you know, excited uh, to play, maybe played a little bit outside of himself. And, and now he's the game has slowed down for him. And uh, you can see that, that he's – you know, in the right place, not overrun things. Um, you know, I thought early on in the season maybe played a little bit out of control. Um, just patience and, um, you know, just much more in control as a player. 
Um, we, we saw JV and Toviano and Jeremiah Hughes play a good bit in the second half. Yeah. Just, um, you alluded to it a little bit earlier, but those are obviously two guys you're probably going to try to get up for, for this game against Bama here in a couple weeks. Just, just talk Yeah, about I would say that they're in the mix. Um, you know, Ashton Stamps should be ready to go. Um, you know, LaTerrence Welch. Um, you know, all those guys will be, you know, certainly uh, part of our rotation. Um, and, uh, you know, we feel like all of them are capable of, of playing uh, championship football. So uh, it's our job to get them ready. And um, they're excited. We're excited about working with them. And um, we expect them to play well for us. I guess just to follow up, just what does that look like in terms of just getting those guys ready for maybe having played a whole ton you know, this year and just making sure that their minds are right and you know, getting the kind of reps they need to you know, be able to play this um, <laughs> What does it look like? Uh, yeah, no, I, I hear what you're trying to ask. I, I mean, they've been here for a while. Like, they, they've been on campus. They, they know what our expectations and standards are. So it's not like we're breaking the glass here, you know, and, and rolling them out for the first time. They, they've been observing. They've been part of it. They've been traveling. They know what it's like. And we feel like they're ready to play. And it's, it's always about opportunity. And, and, I, and I think that these guys, given the opportunity now, uh, are prepared and ready to play. And so um, now it's getting them ready to, you know, step on a field in front of, you know, whatever, 80, 90,000 people against, um, you know, a top 10 football team. And it's a little bit different there, but um, got great confidence in their ability. Hey, Coach, uh, up here, speaking of the Bama game, um, considering that this team is in a very identical position as um, they were in last year going into the Bama game, how would you compare and contrast this team from last year to this year and the position going into next Saturday? Yeah, I respect the question. I just don't have, you know, I just have never really spent time on comparing and contrast, and I just stay focused on, this team, and, and this is a different team. Each year is a different year. Um, you know, I think this team defensively is getting better. Um, you know, I, I'm excited about, you know, what they've been able to do over the last few weeks. Obviously, this is an offense that is uh, elite um, and needs to continue to play at that level. I think if they continue to play at that level, they give you a chance to win every game. Um, so, you know, the moment is now for us, and staying in the moment means continue to work and progress defensively and continue to play at that high level on the offensive side of the ball. Did something change with Makai or get worse about what he's dealing with since last week? Wingo? No, not really. I mean, he's been playing, you know, with, uh, you know, a nagging injury, and uh, we just need to get him right. Um, so, um, We'll see where it takes him, but uh, he's been he's been playing injured here for the last probably two three weeks, and uh, you know, getting him in a position where he physically can play at the level he needs to is is the most important thing. And as y'all try to figure out exactly what cornerback's going to look like for the Bama game, and then moving forward, of course, as well, just what kind of progress are you seeing in terms of the whole secondary playing the ball in the air and getting better in that regard? Well, I mean, I don't know what our interceptions were leading in in the secondary, but we had, you know, three interceptions in the back end of our defense. We got two, you know, two or three PBUs. Um, you know, clearly, um, you know, against, um, you know, Auburn, you know, we played really good pass defense. Um, and then Missouri, you know, we had, you know, a couple of interceptions there. So I think in the, in, since we've, we've settled on a structure defensively, I, I think we've seen the progress necessary to say that we're playing the ball much better in the air and we're making the kind of progress necessary. And we're going to have to be in that realm um, to, to continue the kind of success that we want to have. Um, our safeties are going to have to make plays and our corners are going to have to continue to make plays. Hey, Coach, uh, I know you've talked about you learned that when you coach in the SEC, every game is 
so tough to win and whatnot. But after you walked away from that game last year, LSU Alabama, did you kind of walk away with something like, oh, this is special or this is different when these two teams get together and, and they play? Oh, yeah. There was no difference. I mean, there was a huge difference in terms of just the atmosphere, you know, playing Alabama, the week, you know, going into it. Um, you know, it, it was what it was, uh, you know, it lived up to the hype. Let's put it that way, um, certainly. And there'll be a lot of it, uh, you know, leading into this game. Our guys clearly know who the opponent is, um, what the game means, um, especially for us with a loss already in the conference uh, in the West. So, um, you know, we, we know what it means in, in that respect, but it's, it's also Alabama. So, um, yeah, it, it, it definitely has a, you know, a, a rivalry, big game feel, there's no doubt. Brian, uh, a lot of people, in, us in the media, fans, probably were writing you guys off after a second loss, and, and then you've played maybe better and better the last, you know, the last three games. Uh, was, did, did confidence, has confidence come back? Was it ever lacking? Has is, is that ever changed? When, what component of the, of the way you guys are, are playing right now is that for you? And what do you see in this team? Uh, you know, I, I just think that there were so many factors involved here. Um, you know, um, I think I've said it, uh, you know, a number of times. I think our structure needed to, um, you know, uh, be clearly defined. I think, um, you know, putting the pieces together um, in a manner that allowed our guys to trust each other. Um, do their jobs as one eleventh of the group uh, allowed us to build confidence as a group, uh, and then you got to make some plays, right? We made some plays, and it had spilled on. Uh, it, it, it has, you know, obviously uh, gave the guys and the unit more confidence, you know. And you you get confidence by making plays, and and they hadn't made a lot of plays, quite frankly. So structure, uh, trust. And, and making plays, I think those three components coming together um, has, has allowed this defense to play better. Now, again, we, we have a long way to go. I mean, we're going to play some really good football teams with, with certainly Alabama, Texas A&M, Florida, and Georgia State's a pretty darn good football team as well. So we, we still got some work in front of us to really have this conversation right now is, is a little bit – premature, but we're making the progress necessary. And then our offense has to continue to excel at the high, highest level because they're going to play some really good defenses too. So all we know is that you know, we've got four games left uh, and we put ourselves in a position. Now, now we've got to see where we are over the last month. Uh, after you had a chance to go back and look at the tape, what did you notice about your offensive line and the way they played in the absence of Emory Jones and really the growth that you've seen from them since you came here and where the offensive line stood last year and all Yeah, I think it's probably much more about consistency and performance than, than it is any one individual. They're, they're really confident in what they're doing and how they're doing it. They communicate really well. They pass off stunts. They, they work combinations really well. Um, they, they just work as five really well. And... Even when you take an Emory Jones out of it, um, you know, Hurd steps in there and, and it, it almost seems as like, you know, he's been there for a while and he's just a true freshman stepping in. But um, I think it's really about the five guys working together more than anything else as a unit than any one individual guy standing out. Good. All right. Thanks. Appreciate it.